So this is the second code on the top, the uh, one before the last, and it's dry now. We're going to turn it over, plane it off, and put the last code on the bottom. In general, it's a pretty good job. Each time there's always something a little different. Like this area is kind of perfect, and here we have a funny little line. I don't know why that happened, but what you can do is put a little fan on it. Here we have a little fan, just enough so you don't move a lot of dust around in your spot, but to sort of agitate the surface, and that sometimes helps you create a smoother surface. Ideally, you don't want any of that stuff, but that's not bad. Funnier things have happened, and on this one, we still have one more chance. A lot of times, you'll run into problems with your ratio of your resin being wrong, that'll create funny little patterns and the more you do it the more you'll see what happens, what to expect, what not to expect, but obviously this isn't perfect but it's not bad and we still have one more port. So I'm going to plane off these chunky bits, put the last layer on it and then it's sort of the same always, the three pores on each side and then the only thing again that's different on the last layer on the top will be a tape job to sort of eliminate this kind of thing on the last pore. And that's it. You can elim eliminate some of this stuff as it's drying, you can see my brush leaves little marks on here, but you can use a foam brush and smooth it along as it's drying to control some of this dripping stuff. So we've let our last pour dry. I've turned it over. This is the final pour on the top side, the third and final pour of this side. I've smoothed down some of these edges. I'm going to wipe it down with acetone to ensure good adhesion on my last pour of resin. And also I'm going to mask the edge with tape so we don't have this kind of dribble stuff on the last pour so it's a little easier to sand much in the same way that it was on the very first pour where we used the masking tape so we'll show you that when we get to it okay so as you can see we've attached our fins and there's lots of different fin configurations and fin types and varieties I use FCS which consists of these plugs that align with the little holes on the fins and that's uh, a particular brand and system. There's also there's many different types but I would say just copy the board exactly the fins that you're making and use the configuration that they are. Don't get too creative your first time out and how it works is you get a, a collar on this boring device so you don't go too deep you don't want to go all the way through and you you mark it exactly fins are always pointing toward the stringer generally they almost kiss the edge of the rail here and you bore into it pour some resin in the hole Put the plug in like so, let the air bubbles drip out, put that in there, tape it in place. I use tape, some people use putty, you can use these little dams to contain resin, because the more resin you have running all over the place, the more sanding you're going to have later. I do a little like that to clear the air, 
all the dust out. This is a longboard fin box. We do that with a... This isn't a longboard, so we're not doing that on this one. But we've made a, a template. And you find your appropriate spot. That's the longboard fin holder. And then we tape this down very securely and router this. And that makes the perfect size hole like so and fits right in there. And again with resin and then that would be your longboard center fin. You can do that with the chisel. It's probably what most people would do the first time at because that's sort of a significant investment. And work slowly and just don't get too creative. Just copy the board you're copying exactly and everything's going to be fine. So it's a day later. We can take our jigs out that are in the shape of the fins. Take our tape off, take our fins. I only have one jig set that's that FCS installation kit that I was talking about. And what always happens is it settles in so you've got to go back and just fill it up so it's flush. The, the thing is you don't want to use too much because you're just going to have to sand it all off. But you do want to have enough in there so it's perfectly flush so you don't have any holes in your board where your fins attach because we're going to sand all of this off later. And that's that's how you install fins. What I didn't mention is what the competitors do. They glass the fins on. That's the more old-fashioned way. The fin gets fiberglassed on and it's actually part of the board. So that makes it a lot stronger, but also kind of a pain when you're traveling and if one does break off, that means you've broken your board, not just your fin. So, these days the more modern way is using these systems and uh, I've actually never done the glass on fin because uh, I like to travel with these boards and fins, fins that don't come off for me are no good, but they're better. And that's the fin part of board making. Alright, so it's day 296 on this surfboard. We've just completed the fin holders. We're going to use the same system to attach the leash cup. On long boards, you can drill a hole through the stringer and have your leash go through the stringer which offers a lot more structural strength. On this style of board generally because there's, they're so short you wouldn't put it on the stringer, you'd put it off in a place where you're bound never to step on it which on this board I'm saying is back on the right side. I'm making this board for myself in theory and since I'm a a goofy, most likely my foot, my left foot, would be back here. So I'm going to drill this hole. It's the same system that we use for the fins. Make sure it's just the right depth. Pop that out with the chisel. And something you can do that will add a lot of strength, do this with the fin cups also, is gouge out a little lip. And that way the resin will go up under your fiberglass and it'll be less likely to tear out, which I think is a distinct possibility since 
it's here and not there. So, we've got our hole. We blow out our dust. This is your leash cup. This hole is a little deep because I am nervous on camera. Went a little deep on this one so I've got to build it up. You want it to just be enough so it doesn't overflow with the resin. I'm really nervous on camera. Everything's sticking. Hey, I've got three hands. I know what I'll do. I'll get really creative. You just kind of gotta make it happen. Oh my god. So there we should be alright. We shouldn't have any overflow problems. So we this hole is actually a little big in terms of perfect stuff. I've added a little white pigment to this resin to get it to be this general color of this board. And you just pop it in there. Let those bubbles come up. Uh, what, what I was going to do was going to add these little dams. These are the same ones that you use from the fins. Minimize your overflow. And then fill it up right to the edge. And I like to keep that little piece of steel that you attach your string that attaches the leash to the board with. I keep it, I guess, perpendicular to the board. I'm not really sure which way would be stronger. And then oftentimes I'll put a quarter or something on there to weight it down because it's a little lighter than the resin and has a tendency to pop up. So now we just have to hope that I have a quarter in my pocket. do.